Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and today we're going to talk about C0-C1 joint injections, or what I call the Centeno technique. Uh, I do these very differently, and I've done many, many, many of these procedures. And as a result, I think it's important to get out there what this new technique entails. So the issues with this C0-C1 uh, injection. Uh, physicians often really struggle with this uh, procedure. In fact, I just taught a course on something else and I had a physician come up since I had made a comment about C0-C1 and asked me how I did it. And that's what kind of brought up the need for this video. Uh, fewer and fewer are learning this procedure, which is a real shame because some patients with headaches have C0-C1 pain and they need this joint treated. Now, preferably with biologics, we don't inject high-dose corticosteroids anymore in this practice. Uh, and through the years, I've done about a thousand C0-C1 injections, uh, which may make me the most experienced physician on earth with this particular procedure, simply because uh, most physicians, even experienced spine interventionalists, haven't done more than a hundred or so. So the first thing you have to realize is that the C0-C1 is a cup-shaped joint. So the visible C0-C1 joint line you see on imaging is the bottom of that cup. So the x-ray beam shows the bottom of the cup as the visible joint line, when in fact the real entry zone lives far superior to the visible joint line. And that's the key to getting this procedure done correctly. So here we see a needle entering uh, and we can start to identify a few things. Down here is the visible C1, C2 joint line. Right there is the visible C0, C1 joint line, which is the bottom of the cup. And you can see a very high needle entry right there, which is basically where the Centeno technique goes in. Um, and uh, it's a very reliable place to get into this joint and demonstrate contrast flow intraarticular. So the head is turned approximately 30 degrees to the left for the left C0-C1 injection, so uh, a ipsilateral turn. The neck is flexed with approximately 15 degrees left orbit on the C-arm. Uh, and so that's a pretty routine setup. The difference is where you're going. Uh, so I basically uh, use this kind of metric. What I do is I take the C1, C2 uh, joint and the C0, C1 joint. I go the distance between those two, and then I uh, take that same measurement and go superior to get my needle entry point. So stated another way, the entry zone is equidistant from the visible C0, C1 joint superior as it is from that visible joint line to the C1, C2 joint inferior. So basically this equidistant kind of measurement. And what's also interesting is that the higher you go, since the vertebral artery ducks into the skull, the farther away you are from this structure. So here's the entry point there, and here's the entry point there. So much, much higher than the visible uh, or the, than the vertebral artery lives. So in summary, targeting much higher on the joint than you would normally think possible gets you further away from the vertebral artery and produces a first past C0-C1 contrast flow rate of about 90%, meaning I get in about 90% on the, uh, on the first time. Uh, it's an important injection that can help many patients, so it needs to be in the skill set of more and not fewer interventional spine experts. And do not attempt this procedure until you have completed at least 100 lower cervical facet injections and at least 50 C1, C2 joint injections. In addition, take a established course to learn how to do this, and then you can modify that technique here. Uh, please don't try to go out and do this procedure based on a, on a YouTube video. So thanks so much for watching, and I hope this helps you get into the C0-C1 joint.